all the Sagittarius Sun, Scorpio Moons, welcome to your 2021 Sun Moon reading. Keep uh, keep in mind if it resonates, consider a personal reading. Just send me an email and we can go ahead and set that up. When you view this is when you were meant to see it. And my 2020 playlists are still, 2020 Sun Moon readings are still in my playlist. If you would like to go check those out. I'm doing these in order of requests and comments, so be sure to post yours up. First portion of this reading will be the traits of your Sun Moon combination. Um, and we'll take a quick look at that. And we'll take a quick look at your 2021 following that. The second portion will be the Vimeo link below, where I will be going into depth of the main cards with clarifiers. I'm dividing the year up into four separate sectors. Other things to mention, check out my playlist for what is your ideal career based on your mission and what is your compatibility with your partner's sun sign. Ask me a question on Instant Go, check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Like, share, subscribe, and or donate. Otherwise, let's get to the treat of your sun moon combination. So Sag hold on, <laughs> get my cards right. Sagittarius Sun Scorpio Moons. You know what you want and how to go about getting it, probably because you have vision, determination, and capability in your toolbox. You are sage, sharp and intense, but can also be temperamental, callous, and too sensitive. There is no need to make everything a battle. Choose the higher ground. Your foes cannot defeat your sheer force, but you may want to work a bit more on incorporating tact and diplomacy. In relationships, you have a tendency to get overly emotional. You're a giving part partner and open to new, intense experiences in the bedroom. You can charm and convince your partner into anything. Your ideal mate is somebody who is grounded and challenges your demands. In career, you are the strategists and planners to build your success. You combine managerial skills and creativity in the workplace. However, you can be known to point out others' weaknesses in order to get ahead. Taking on any project challenges, projects challenge, challenges you set out on how to attack them and not readily and you are not ready but you are not readily open to others opinions any job that requires you to employ your curiosity intelligence and perceptivity is a good fit you could find yourselves being scientists doctors or counselors so let's see what's going on for you guys holy spirit angels my guys universe can you please have your truth your wisdom your clarity and your insight for Sagittarius Sun, Scorpio Moon for the year 2021. What do you see? What do they need to know to reach your higher ground and come closer to universe and closer to divine through your messages? Any messages you have for their greater good? Sagittarius Sun, Scorpio Moon, we greatly appreciate it and we thank you. Sagittarius Sun, Scorpio Moon, what do you see? What do they need to know for 2021? What do you see for January, February, March for Sagittarius Sun, Scorpio Moons? We have the Two of Swords in reverse. April, May, June, we have the Five of Wands in the upright. July, August, September, we have the Seven of Pentacles in the upright. October, November, we have the Sun card in the upright. So um, it looks like it ends well. So, But you're coming into the year um, having to make some sort of decision that you definitely don't want to make. Um, you know that if you choose one way, not so great. The other way, not so great. It's usually um, a choice and you kind of pick the lesser of two evils. I usually tell people, you know, take the one thing and put down the pros and cons and the other thing and put down the pros and cons and then, you know, make your decisions based on those lists. Now, try as you might to put off this decision that you're absolutely dreading on making, you really aren't going to have a choice because um, with the Two of Swords in reverse, there's usually an ultimatum associated with it. So it means that if you don't make the decision when you need to make, make it, um, it, it's going to be made for you, okay? And even doing nothing at all is actually making a conscious decision if you think about it. Now, in April, May, June, the decision is made or not made, but as a result of whatever happened in January, February, and March, there's a lot of uh, conflict going on. So um, there's people that really, so you may have made it, might have made a decision, and there are people who are going against this or they don't agree with it. So they're confronting you, they're um, competing with you, they're arguing with you. Um, it could be over money sometimes or um, just conflict over rules that have been put in place, but there's a group of people that are having um, difficulties with this and aren't agreeing with this. And they're all kind of fighting over each other, shouting to be heard over each other, um, you know, and, and it's it's really competitive and really rivalrous. So, and you, you could be in there amongst them or they could just be fighting amongst themselves about something that you have decided or you determined um, prior to. 
Now in July, August, September, this has you wondering if you're going to continue to invest in this situation. I think you're kind of worn down at this point. You've put a lot into it, a lot of your energies into it. I don't feel like you're in a comfortable place and you're wondering, hmm, do I really want to keep on, you know, pouring myself into this and, you know, whatever this um, situation is that's, you know, conflictual um, or what have you, or whatever this situation is based on me having to make decisions that I don't want to make. Um, but there's some kind of payoff to it, okay? Um, with the Seven of Pentacles, it's kind of telling you, yeah, you need to keep on doing this, that it's going to be worth investing, and that eventually it's going to lead to potential success. So even though you're in an un uncomfortable place, you know, the three quarters of the year kind of going in, um, as we move into October, November, December, we have the Sun card, which is one of the best cards you can have out of all 78 cards. And that's actually a card of like everything going great. Finally, being happy, being joyous, looking forward to um, something super optimistic, ha not having anything to hide, you know, being very pure, being very honest, being very open with people. So I kind of feel like everything ends up, if you continue investing, everything's going to kind of fall into place and work out for you um, once you get to the end of the year. So if this resonates with you, consider a personal reading. Just send me an email and we can set that up. Otherwise, make sure you click on the Vimeo link below. I'll be pulling these clarifiers on these cards for a deep for interpretation. Check out my playlist for my 2020 sun moon readings. What is your ideal career based on your midheaven? What is your compatibility with your partner's sun sign? Ask me a question on Instago. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Like, share, subscribe, and or donate. Otherwise, I'll see you in the Vimeo reading. Adios.